I want to use this project as a base for future work, so I've decided to add options that are expected from real games. To help with development, I've created a Trello board. If you're not familiar with Trello, it's a free site for keeping track of projects and is flexible enough so that you can craft your own system for doing so. I've included a link to the board in the video description. You can see here I've got past versions and their major features to the right. For this update and future ones you'll see a greater number of cards since I can now track all ideas, both large and small. At the moment, most of them relate to expanding the big feature of this release, the modular menu system. But before we get into that, there were a few smaller changes as well. You can now hold down to drop the block at a faster speed than normal, though still slower than the fall button. The shutter time, which is what happens when cubes collide, has been increased to 0.12 seconds from 0.07, making it more obvious that it's actually happening. The game's font has also been changed, since the default one included with Unreal was too broad for more elaborate menus. Also, the lower light has been changed from my directional one to a point light since forward rendering mode doesn't currently allow for more than one directional light at a time. So, the new menus. I spent a lot of time learning about and working with widgets, both for regular play and in VR. And while the widgets do offer some great utility, I eventually decided to build upon this project's existing menu style. The widget I was experimenting with is still there if you want to have a look at it, though the code isn't fully functional. Anyway, the AIM was a modular system with a solid framework that's easy to expand on in future. Plus, simple and understandable enough for other people to use for their purposes. Crafting this taught me a lot more about UE4 especially how placing the majority of your code and variables in the level blueprint isn't always a great idea. And so here's how it works. There's a menu BP blueprint that's used as the base for new menus. When you want to create a new menu, right click on menu BP and choose create child blueprint class. Since it's a child, this allows the existing menu BP code to work alongside any new code that you create for this particular menu. Now place the menus into the world and you don't need to worry about the visibility or location of the menus or the options in the editor view. The existing menu BP code automatically takes care of this during gameplay. Menus must be assigned by selecting your main menu and entering them into the menu map. This allows them to be referenced later. And you can alter the map keys with the menu type enum. Now you can add options to each menu naming them and entering the items that the player can select from into the items array, if they're static. If they're generated dynamically, then you'll need to write code for this in the menu blueprint. Sometimes you want to specify the item that's selected by default, which you can do with the selected item value. The back option is automatically inserted as the last option for sub-menus, so there's no need to add this yourself. If you want to use an option to switch menus, just use the Switch to Menu macro and select the target menu. 
And that's the general outline of how the menus work. There's also extra code that handles quality of life features that you can have a look at. And I'll have another update for this project out soon.